Grace, peace, and mercy be multiplied to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Pay attention. Yes, sir. Pay close attention to what? What does our text say? To what we have heard. This meant the holy writings, either as they received them from letters or as the apostles themselves spoke to them directly. This is also what St. Jude meant when he said, Contend for the faith once and for all delivered unto the saints. That's why we got to pay close attention. We're not looking for a new revelation. We're looking for the old, old story that is so true and will remain true. Why? What does our text say? So that we will not drift away. Remember last week with St. James, he said, there are those who are wandering, there are those who are drifting away from the faith, and they are lost. The question our text asks, how shall we escape if we neglect such a great salvation? Now think about that. God sent his only son to die a very horrible death for us because the wages of sin is death. That's what he did. He gave us the Holy Spirit so that we could believe it. He done everything and we would turn our back on that. Put that in our own context. I think of the many times I have gone out of my way and done nice things for people and they didn't appreciate my efforts of time or money and I felt hurt. Now, sometimes I didn't think things through. They didn't really want it in the first place. I should have known that. But other times they were just plain rude and unappreciative. And I was hurt. Undoubtedly, you've experienced the same thing. You went out of your way. You walked the extra mile. You, you sacrificed of time, talent, and treasure, and advice. And you tried to help people out. You were, all, you were very altruistic. No, I don't want it. And you felt badly about that. Well, transfer those feelings of unrest and of hurt to Jesus Christ. The greatest, most altruistic gift of all time was Jesus. And they turned his back on him. St. Paul put it this way, God shows his love for us and while we were sinners, he sent his only son to die for us. We all know John 3, 16 by heart, and the big word there is gave. But what does that really tell you? It is not until we go to St. Paul and we see what gave meant that he died. Well, you say the other two guys died too, yeah. But Jesus took our sins to the cross and suffered for each and every one of them. The other men only died for themselves. It used to be my custom on Good Friday to always read a very detailed account of what the crucifixion really was. Very bloody, very painful. Well, I'll admit that this evening, but you and I know that the same Jesus, who when he was flogged and whipped and had the crown of thorns and all the other things spit upon, what does the Old Testament say of him? He opened not his mouth. And yet when he was being crucified, he did open his mouth. He cried out, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Now I would be exaggerating, if not lying, if I said I've always done my very best to be a good pastor. But I will say that in all my congregations, I've gone out of my way. I've walked the extra mile. Most of the time I've turned the other cheek. Sometimes they even bless people who curse me. In my last parish especially, I have really worked hard for those people. I went up against the district. Give you a little history. Forward in remembrance, the city collected all kinds of money and bought uh, future mission sites. They spent $45,000. They turned it over to the southern district, and the southern district says, we need to get a profit off of this. First of all, they swapped property around and got $200,000. Then they came to us a mission with just a few people said, you can have it for $120,000. A mission. So I talked to some of my pastors and they said, no, that's wrong. I said, I'm going to go there and fight with them. Will you go with me? Oh, no. <laughs> they wouldn't go with me. Finally, I got it for $45,000. 
Then we built the building. We came in $1,000 under budget, not like here. We were several tens of thousands <coughs> over budget here. But I was the chairman back then, and I made sure we did it the very best way possible. Then I got sick in the surgery, which should have been an overnight process, with several months in recovery, and they turned on me. I appealed to the district, they hey, you're the guy who caused us so much trouble and lost us all this money. We're not standing up for you. And so, Pastor Elsrode said, we were opening up a mission in Pigeon Forge. I said, hey, I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> that hurt. But not like what Jesus went through. And not what the Father went through. When he looked upon his son dying on the cross, what did he do? He blackened the sun. And he shook the air so violently that graves were opened. Our text says, What is man that thou art so mindful of him, and the son of man that you care for him? It refers to Jesus, but it also refers to us. And speaking of mankind, the mankind of Jesus' day, you've heard this before. Because of this, God gave them over to shameful lust. Even their women exchanged natural relations for unnatural ones, in the same way men also abandoned natural relations with women and were inflamed with lust for one another. Men committed indecent acts with other men and received in themselves the due penalty for their perversion. Furthermore, since they did not think it worthwhile to retain the knowledge of God, he gave them over to a depraved mind to do what ought not to be done. They have become filled with every kind of wickedness, evil, greed, depravity. They are full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, and malice. They are gossips, slanderers, God-haters, insolent, arrogant, and boastful. They invent ways of doing evil. They disobey their parents. They are senseless, faithless, heartless, ruthless. Although they know God's righteous decree that those who do such things deserve death, they not only continue to do these very things, but they also approve those who practice them. And yet... God so loved this world, this world filled with these kind of sinners, for God was in Christ, reconciling this world unto himself, no longer counting sins and trespasses against them. Now that speaks to us, but not of us, because you see, we're not that loving, and we're not that forgiving. Although, what did Jesus say? Love one another, even as I have loved you, what does the Bible say? Forgiving one another, just as God in Christ has forgiven you. No wonder St. Paul would say of all his accomplishments, of all his good deeds, that he counted them as rubbish, as dross. No wonder then all the nice things that you and I do are as insignificant compared to Jesus as the dirt under an ant's fingernail. Now, the ants have fingernails? I don't know. I don't know what to pay attention. But, <laughs> but you can see how insignificant that is. No wonder then that all the hurt that we've ever felt doesn't even begin to come up to one millisecond of the time Jesus spent on the cross. And that is why we should be able to love one another even as Jesus has loved us. And why we should be able to forgive one another even as God in Christ has forgiven us. And I haven't. And you haven't. And I won't. Because I can't. Because I'm human. And you're human. I'm just like the people who didn't appreciate me. You see, they're no different than I am because I don't always appreciate God either. That is why Jesus said, you who are without sin, cast the first stone. And so I dropped it. Instead of picking up a stone, I stand alone. St. Paul has said, oh, the good I want to do, I don't. And the evil I don't want to do, that I do. O oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me? Thanks be to God who gives me the victory through my Lord Jesus Christ. That makes that old hymn so true, namely. Just as I am, how does St. Paul put it? By the grace of God, I am what I am. Just as I am, thou wilt receive, will welcome, pardon, cleanse, relieve. Because thy promise I believe, O Lamb of God, I come, I come. Now, that I feel justified 
by an all-loving and forgiving God. I want to stand with Jesus, go to this text, and I want to declare his name to my brothers and sisters in the presence of this congregation. I will sing praises to God and again and again I will put my trust in him. And that's what we're doing right now. And that is why public worship is so important. That we dare not miss any opportunity to come into his house with thanksgiving and honor him with songs of praise. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.